Hi, Steve here. Welcome to my video about payoff pitch. Um, before we get started, a few introductory remarks. Uh, first, this isn't a tutorial or a replay video. There are tons of those out there and I encourage you to take a look at them. Uh, second, this is not a criticism of the game. In fact, just the opposite. I'm a new fan of payoff pitch baseball and I actually bought the game um, from a person, uh, the, the actual cards um, that came with three different seasons. I also went on the website and bought the latest PDF of the rules and the charts, which also comes with uh, the 1979 season. And then I recently ordered the 1969 season and uh, I'm in the beginnings of doing a replay of the 1972 Pittsburgh Pirates season. So um, I've, I've become a fan of this game. Uh, at the same time, I have um, always been interested in how games are designed. Uh, I have a separate video on my ch channel where I talk about game design. I encourage you to take a look at it. Um, another thing is uh, if you like this video, please, please like it if you find it interesting. And uh, even better, Leave a comment if you would like to add to the discussion. Um, finally, you're welcome to subscribe to my channel. That's one way for you to tell me that you would like to see more of this type of content. And with that, uh, let's dive into payoff pitch. So I'm assuming if you're here, you probably know something about payoff pitch, but to make sure that everybody is on the same page, I'll talk about the game briefly about how it's designed. So payoff pitch, I, I love the design. It took a new approach to um, to the pitcher and batter interaction. Uh, and so you see an example of a pitcher on the left, Steve Carlton. So what you do is you roll two traditional six-sided dice. From that, you determine which section on the batter's card you're gonna look at. And so there's four major sections, as you can see here. One is wheelhouse. One is in play, one is patient, and one is tough. There are also two at the bottom uh, that aren't on the batter card. One's called ball, ballpark and one's called defense. I'll only talk briefly about those, but ballpark uh, directs you actually to a ballpark card. This is an example of a ballpark card. And as you can see, depending on a dice roll, you'll actually end up either in the wheelhouse section of the batter's card or the in-play part of the batter's card. Um, the, the defense is uh, actually refers you to a defense check or an error check. And so that's, that's most likely gonna result in, a, in an error or um, some other kind of out. And um, that's a relatively small allocation on these charts. Typically it's a, like an 11 or 12. Um, which is a pretty pretty low allocation. That's one out of 36 chances. Sometimes it's um, sometimes it's a little more, but but usually on average it, it averages out to about one and a half chances out of 36, which I think is about five percent of the at bats or plate appearances will will result in a, in a defense check. So what happens is after you've determined which section of the batter's card to roll on. You roll two 10-sided dice and you read the result uh, and, it, and it matters whether uh, the batter is facing a left-hand pitcher or right-hand pitcher. So um, if, if one of the results hits, you, you can read the result in the middle of the card there. If, if it doesn't apply, you drop straight down and read the out uh, sequence that, that's down below. So pretty straightforward. Um, I will point out, because this is relevant to, the, to this video, um, home runs only show up in the wheelhouse section. Uh, walks and hits batsmen only show up in the patient section. Strikeouts only show up in the tough section. Singles, doubles, and triples can show up in each or any of the four sections, and that's, that's important for, for what this video is about. So that's how it works. Uh, in terms of the game, I think it's fun to play. 
Uh, as I mentioned, the design is, is very interesting. Uh, you can play it with dice, or as is shown here, you can play it with uh, fast action cards. But again, that's not the purpose of the video uh, today. Uh, I would encourage you to go out and, and buy Payoff Pitch. And in fact, you have a choice of buying these teams in either physical cards or in, uh, in a PDF, which you can print yourself. Uh, my suggestion is you just go ahead and buy the cards. And um, they are some of the best out there. They're glossy, they're heavy card stock. Um, I'd say the other thing about these teams is that uh, the company has um, decided that they will produce a card for anybody that played that year. So the so-called fringe players, there's a lot of those. Now that's a bit of a blessing and a curse. This is an example of how many cards show up in one team. And, and if you'll bear with me, I'll show you what a box full of teams looks like. So uh, it does end up being a bit of a storage problem or storage challenge. But, um, you know, you get essentially every player, which is probably good for someone doing a season replay with as-played lineups. So again, I, I'm a fan of this game. I've spent some money on it. And, and the, the physical cards weren't available for a while, um, but just recently uh, they became available. This is being recorded in early December, 2022. Um, and um, the cards are again available uh, for purchase. So the idea of this video is, you know, I'm curious about how games are designed and, and what I wanna know is you know, whether or not the game is accurate, if you will. And, and in my other video, I, I mentioned this um, briefly. I'll mention it briefly here, but, you know, st statistical accuracy, I think you can think of it in two ways. One is, you know, absolute accuracy. Does, does, the, does the player card represent what happened in, in real life? And, and can it help you reproduce realistic results. But I think there's also relative accuracy. So for example, is a good pitcher better than, than a bad pitcher in the game? Uh, you know, is a hitter, um, a home run hitter gonna hit more home runs than, than, than a singles hitter? And, and I, will, I will say straight out that payoff pitch is, is very good as it relates to relative accuracy. And and kind of to uh, foreshadow what I'm going to talk about, I think it is at least reasonably accurate from an absolute standpoint. Um, I'll give you an example of the relative accuracy. So this is Steve Carlton again on the left. His uh, breakout of his chart is on the top. You know, he had a 2.34 ERA, and you can see that the tough results are 56% of, of the outcomes. Whereas you have Fergie Jenkins late in his career, uh, 4.07 ERA. Um, he actually had only 36% of his chances were tough. And um, the wheelhouse was, was a sizable amount. And then if you take into account the ballpark where half of those approximately are wheelhouse, uh, you can see why he, he would produce a, a worse outcome than, than Steve Carlton. So uh, my focus of this analysis I did was to try to see if, if payoff pitch was accurate in a um, absolute sense. Um, as I alluded to before, I think it's directionally accurate uh, at a minimum, and uh, it's, it's probably too complex of a game to know for sure. Uh, I would say I would discourage anyone from trying to make their, their own cards. Uh, it's theoretically possible, but, you know, I, I think uh, you're better off just buying the game uh, cards. And um, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, the, the designer or the creator of the game has not released the formulas, and, and I don't blame him. Uh, he, he doesn't intend to. Um, so, 
So there's that. So I'm going to show you a few things on my computer screen, which you see here. I apologize, it's going to be kind of hard to read, but uh, I'll, I'll try to keep this at a pretty high level and get to the point of what, what my analysis did. So I have the 1981 season of payoff pitch as one of my, my seasons, and I chose Robin Yount to do an analysis. Now, as I mentioned before, um, the, uh, the key here is that um, the home runs, the walks, the hit batsmen, and strikeouts only show up in a certain section of the batter card. And from that, you can derive some information. So here at the top of this spreadsheet, I have downloaded uh, Robin Yount's uh, total stats for the year and his right and left-hand splits since the card for the batters is split between right and left-handed. And then down below here, I have done an analysis where I've tried to reverse engineer based on uh, how many home runs per plate appearance, walks per plate appearance, strikeouts per plate appearance, etc. How many of those uh, or how frequent that should happen and then how frequent is it on the chart and assuming the chart, I'm sorry, the, the player card and if the player card is accurate, then you know what's the implied allocation on the pitcher card uh, to wheelhouse, patient, and tough. And then by default, the rest, other than, other than the defense check, the rest goes to in play. And so from this, I, I determined that somewhere around seven to 9% of the pitcher uh, card should be allocated to, to wheelhouse. Uh, somewhere in the low 20s should be allocated to, to patient. And somewhere in the low 30s should be allocated to strikeouts. I can't explain why this pops up as, as different, different amounts. Uh, it could be rounding. It could be something about the construct of the game that, that I don't understand. I don't know. Um, actually, after I worked on some batters, uh, I actually went and took a sample of pitchers, which I'm showing here, the end result. But actually, what you can see for the six or seven AL pitchers, you can see what, what the allocation turned out to be. And for the six National League pitchers, what the allocation turned out to be, and then what it was combined. And so um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and, and the numbers I had shown you previously seem to, to line up with, with what, the, what, the, what the Robin Yount analysis came up with. Um, the next thing I looked at is, you know, how were all the chances on the player card uh, allocated both by type of outcome, first, you know, single, double, triple home run, hits batsman, walks, or strikeouts, and then where they showed up in terms of the, the four main sections of the card. And then what I did is, is I did an analysis of this. Um, it took a few iterations, but basically once I applied some standard weights to the four sections and computed weighted outcomes, um, I was able to determine, you know, what kind of the percentage of outcomes per pl plate appearance each of the outcomes was on the card. And then I compared to what it was actually in real life. And you can see for Robin Yount, these things are coming within a percent or even, even right on. So that gives me a lot of comfort that the card design uh, is, is accurate, if you will, is going to produce a, 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 an exact result. Um, there's a little noise created by the fact that some outcomes on, on the pitcher card go straight to a defense check, um, but we're not going to worry about that, that here. Um, the last thing I did or tried to do with some limited success is take, take this data at the bottom 
and convert it into an implied batting average and an implied slugging percentage. And for some reason, the averages I'm coming up with are a little lower than, than the real life average. And that could be a function of me doing something wrong in my calculations. Um, or it's possible that, that for some reason the, the batting averages implied in the card are, are, are low. Um, I think I'm willing to bet it, it may be because I'm, I'm not doing the calculation correctly. Uh, the reason why I feel that way is that, that these results at the bottom kind of prove the inherent integrity of the card. But, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of where, where I ended up. The last thing I was looking at, more out of curiosity, was, you know, how were the various types of outcomes, particularly the various types of hits, allocated across the four major sections of the, of the card? And so what you see with singles is, except for maybe tough, um, they were fairly evenly allocated otherwise. Um, high 20s to low 30% of the total outcome uh, outcomes uh, were in wheelhouse patient and in play. Doubles, again, tough seem to be generally lower as you would expect. Um, and triples, uh, you know, more or less, I think, ended up more on the, uh, the wheelhouse and the patient and minimal amounts on the tough and in play. But the main observation, I mean, that's all logical, but the main observation was, and we'll see this in a minute, is there's no particular pattern as to why and how these are allocated. It, it, it varies by batter and it varies a little bit even within a batter um, in terms of the left and right handedness, you know, how the how the hits are allocated. So I, I have also here, here Gorman Thomas, another brewer from um, 1981. And um, first of all, he didn't have any triples at all. So there's no triples at all on his card. Um, in the games I, I have built or the, or the card generation game, uh, spreadsheets that I've built, I try to make sure there's at least one possibility of a single, double, triple, or home run for, for every batter, even, even if it's very remote. But what you can see here is, um, you know, if you look at the singles, most of them show up, about half of them show up on the patient card here but it's more evenly distributed uh, on the left-hand batter side of, of things. I think the other thing I, I saw when I checked out other batters is they didn't all work out as great as, as the Yount example did. And I don't know if you can, can see these, but I highlighted a, a couple things. Uh, so for some reason, he had more walks in real life than what my calculations say his his card uh, should have or ha actually has um, at, on the left hand pitcher side, um, but then if you go over here, um, the walks are perfectly fine, uh, and the home runs seem to be fine, but um, the singles are seemingly too low on, on the card. I, I really don't know why. Uh, as a result, um, again, the, the batting averages don't seem to, to jive with real life. Um, sorry to leave, leave some of these open questions. Uh, I, again, I, I think the cards are well designed. I think to the extent that some of these things um, don't match are more of a function of my analysis and less a function of, of how the cards were designed. Maybe one final thought on, on the accuracy of this game. Uh, and that is, there's probably two other ways people have tried to assess the accuracy of this game. One is to do season replays, 
which can can be helpful to reinforce the accuracy of the game. Um, I really haven't done enough research to know what people think. Uh, I also saw on a forum where somebody had analyzed the game by taking, I think it might have been Carl Yastrzemski, and um, reproducing every at-bat he had in a given year, and then uh, doing some type of statistical analysis and proving that that in fact his statistics came out came out accurately, and that may be the best way to to do this. Um, I guess to close, uh, I'll I'll close where I start started. This game is fun to play. It is definitely accurate in a in a relative sense. It seems reasonably accurate at a minimum, uh, in an absolute sense, and I recommend you you get get a hold of this game. And, and go ahead and play it. And, and the main thing, as always, is just have fun. Thanks for listening. Again, let me know your thoughts. Um, and that's it. Thanks. Bye.